Hello fellow YouTubers, welcome back to my channel. So I uh, said on my former video I would make a video about my uh, building of a new rig. Um, it's a rig I built 10 years ago actually, the design I made 10 years ago. It's easy made, you can make it in one day. That's what we're going to do now, we're going to get the planks, get uh, everything we need, uh, go online, get the chair and build a rig and actually you can do it in one day. Uh, the paint job will take maybe a day or two longer. Paint has to dry. Uh, otherwise, easy peasy. Uh, I started off in my days with a steering wheel clamped to my desk. Uh, so if you got your steering wheel, you clamp it to your desk. Problem is, um, if you got a desk like this with your monitor at home, um, <clears throat> not everybody has different PCs for the sim rig. You use the same PC to game with, you need the same PC to go on YouTube, uh, surf online, Google, whatever. But you want, you want to race as well. So you clamp your steering wheel here, and the problem is, once you're finished, you have to unclamp it, uh, put it somewhere, the cables are in the way, your pedals are in the way, so you move your pedals as well. And the next day you want to race, and you have to clamp back the steering wheel, put the pedals back. Problem with the pedals is, they move. They're not fixed to the to the ground. So when you're racing, sometimes you're a bit too eager. You press the the throttle or the brake too hard, and your pedals move away from you. I had it happen to me a hundred times during a race. Very annoying. So then I thought, okay, I love doing this. Why not build myself a rig and put my steering wheel on a on a steady base that I don't have to move constantly. Um, so that's what I did. About 10, 12 years ago, I made my rig out of wood. I'm not a carpenter, so I can, if I can do it, I'm just a DIY man, and everybody can do it. So, not everybody can afford the rig I have now, thing like that, which is a Prosimo uh, 3D UF. Uh, but the rig we're gonna build now, I used for 10 years. I, I, I enjoyed it, so you move on, you buy better stuff. I started with a, a G-Force, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, G27, I think it was, and then I moved over to Trustmaster, now I have Fanatec, and when the Fanatec uh, Direct Drive comes out, I'll probably move on to that, and so forth and so forth. So it's something you build up gradually as you go older, like me, um, and enjoy. Enjoy the growth of from, start from scratch to the ultimate machine. So let's start building this thing. Uh, we'll get the planks, go to the DIY shop, and move on from there. Keep on watching. So guys, let's head off and get a MDF plate from the DIY shop. And it's bloody cold out here. I mean, look at my window. Ugh, look at it. It's all frozen. The whole thing is frozen. Ugh. Bloody hell, my balls. Oh, let's put the camera right. I'm gonna freeze my balls off <clears throat> to make this simulator, but hey, anything for YouTube. Let's start this baby. Okay, need to refuel apparently. Please put fuel in. That's something you don't need to do in a simulator, put fuel in a car. Okay, so we're off to the DIY shop. So here we are at the inside the store. And we got loads of loads of stuff to choose from here. On here. So we got the whiteboard MDF. It's a white one. 38 euro. And then we got the black one here. And I like this one as well. Unfortunately this one is like 60 euro black MDF. 60 euro. Uh, it looks nice though. And it's all true black. So I'm not sure which one I'm gonna take now, um, the black one or the white one. So guys, let me elaborate on that. You got so many planks to choose from. Uh, you know, it's difficult. So you can either choose a watertight one, a painted one, a totally black one, into the grain, black, dense one. Uh, many types to choose from. The important bit is you have to choose one that's 1.8 centimeters thick. If you go any less, your rig won't be sturdy enough. Take a look at the plan. 
Um, uh, plank measures 244 centimeters by 122 that's a standard size and you need uh, five pieces uh, piece a b and c piece a you need two of them piece b just one and the pieces c you need two of them or uh, as well so in total five pieces and the chap in the diy shop will cut this up for you for free if it's a good diy shop so the guy here did that for me, cut them into pieces and they fit better in your car. Otherwise you need a truck to move the plank and it weighs too much as well. So let's continue. So here I have another plan, but a more detailed one. The blue bits are the bits we are going to use. So our chap in the DIY shop cut them into five pieces for us. And uh, the measurements you can see on the pieces here. We got uh, piece C is 50 by 50. Piece number or letter B is 50 by 122. And A is uh, 135 and 50 high. So that are all the pieces the blue bits like i said we need so we're now going to take a cutter and cut those pieces out with a jigsaw we'll do that outside because it's a hell of a mess if you do it inside and i took the blackboard so outside it is so guys i've taken it outside because the snow is gone the sun is out it's beautiful weather and uh like two weeks ago there's loads of snow here so you i'll show you a few pictures of that and now it's dry and sunny belgium is a weird country anyway best to do it outside you don't get any problems with the wife otherwise the whole interior is full of dust sawdust and noise and you will get other sorts of noise when you do it outside inside with the wife but don't do it inside good tip there so I'm not a carpenter, I'm not a specialist in wood or anything, so if I can do it, anyone can do it. Uh, we've got the plan. This is the plan. We have plan A, plan B, and if that doesn't work, we've got plan C. No, just joking. So it's an easy, an easy build because you only need one, two, three, four, five pieces. That's it. Five pieces and you got yourself a sim rig. So you got the bottom piece number uh, letter B and then you got top one C uh, bottom side panel there's another C and then you got two side panels which is A A so you start with A which is logical you start with A and then B we got our planks which we MDF the black ones I took uh, best thing you can get is a white pen this is a black pen you just said a white pen well there's my dog he's off with my white pen <laughs> he ate it and <laughs> somewhere over there with my white pen with a big smile on his face and i got the black pen but if you're doing it on black mdf white would be better wouldn't it so yeah okay white it is what you also need is like a lid of a a bucket you can use anything you want really as long as it's round and big that aids you in making the drawings i'll zoom in down there a bit there we go so you have to make the drawings on this because it has to look like look at the blue parts we don't want the white part so we're going to cut out the white part and just be like because this is a mirror of each other you don't need the top uh, looks a bit like a sleigh, Santa's sleigh. You got this bottom piece and going upwards that way, and here is your steering wheel. So easy peasy, really. So to do that curving here, curvature, you take a lid of a bucket, 10 litre, 12 litre bucket, size lid. You can take anything you want. Some people have like a cord uh, with a centerpiece, and it can do that. I mean, if you're a carpenter, you know what I mean. They can do it like easy peasy. Uh, actually, this top bit here is now square. 
19 degrees corner. I like it like curved as well. Makes it easier, makes it smoother and, and looks nicer. So how do we do that? Well, you got that. Oh, you can't see that here. A bit lower. Shove it over here. So you got this, that's the corner. If you want it curved, easy peasy. You just take this, make it so the sides are equal to the sides of the lid and then take the pen and do this and you got a smooth corner I already did one in white with a well, white pen the dog has just eaten uh, and the bottom half I did as well I'm not sure if I'm gonna do the bottom half in a curve or we're gonna make it straight we'll see how I do that uh, if you don't do it you can do it afterwards really so the other bit Robert has lost his ball apparently, he's going bonkers now. The other bit, this curvy bit, I'll put here. There we go, and we got a nice curve of the other lid. So the dimensions are going to be on here. So you need a big 10 centimeter stroke of wood down here. Then it goes upwards, and this is where the plank goes where your steering wheel fits on. It will all come to shape once you see it. So how do we all cut this stuff? Well, easy peasy. You got a jigsaw. This is one like made 15 years ago. A black and decker. This is what you need. Another handy tool is this. A circular saw, but a tiny one. This is really, really good stuff. I mean, this cuts anything uh, and pretty good actually, without having to go out with a, for a really big one. So, let's start with the straight line here. We'll cut that out. But first, I'm gonna give Robert his ball back. We got Robert's ball. That's what he's yearning for. Why, Robert? So we'll plug that in, which works much better with power and by hand. Never touch it with your hand. Bad idea. Give it some depth. Should do it. So now we're gonna cut all the way down this line here without cutting in my wife's table. Our outdoor dining table. I've done it once already, no wanna do it again. Peasy. Get rid of the black dust. So we've got this bit off. You see? And now we're going to have to cut this. This we can only do with a jigsaw because it's curved. That thing won't do it. Get this one out. Now you see what I mean with dust? I mean, I. This can get really dirty. You don't want this in your house? Do it outside. Oops, hit the camera there. Does thing still work? Yes, it does. I'm gonna 
I've kept that first piece, but this one, because it's straighter with this guy. That wasn't really that straight, was it? Oh, I could have done that better. Okay. That's crooked, by the way. So now we have to cut this piece out with a jigsaw. And the only thing you can do is... Well, easy peasy. We go, have to go through this block. Bit up. I just have to make sure you're not cutting your table anymore. Otherwise, that will be good. Hope you guys still can see this. really that good. Look at this. Bad. That's not perfect craftsmanship, but we have stuff to hide that. This bit can go for now. So here we got Santa's sleigh. This piece. Now I'm still going to do this top piece because I like it that way. Looks exactly like the blue bit here. Slay number one. So the only next thing you have to do is get the other piece. Get that now. Plank, put that piece on top of that one, make sure they're aligned, and if so, draw along this, and we've got an exact copy. Got the black pen, not the white. Go. Well, that's it. Get rid of this piece. I don't know if you guys can see that. There we go. We got the copy and the other sledge. Now we're going to cut this one. Hopefully. Just a bit better. Saves on uh, afterwards having to clean up the whole thing.
Oh, this one. There you go. Bob's your uncle. We got two pieces. That's what we want. Two pieces of the sledge, left and right side. Just have to cut up this bit. We're done. Actually, these two bits you can use afterwards for reinforcing the inside, which is quite handy. So, let's clean this up, get back inside. Here we are back again in the man cave and we clean everything up, got it back inside and we've got to continue. So what do we need to do? This bottom plate. Now you can leave this bottom plate as is, as one massive heavy plate. Um, or you can cut holes in them. Why would you cut holes in them? Because you can make the plate lighter that way. Um, for the moment, I'm not going to cut holes in it. I'm going to leave it as is. Uh, I'll see how heavy the total rig is, and then I can decide. I turn it over and put some holes in it. Take a riot gun and from close up, poof! Maybe those holes are too tiny. I mean, so I need a cannon. Bigger holes with a cannon. So, you get the bottom plate, which is B. You got the B. And we got, I may say in the kitchen programs, this one I made earlier. So, that's one we made before, the sledge part. The sledge part actually comes on top of this guy. Now you will notice that, um, right, you can't notice, you can't see. The bottom uh, thingy here is shorter than that one. The re reason for that is that, well, we had one big pl MDF plank, you know, in a DIY shop, and we had to do it with that. Uh, if you want a bigger base, you ought to have to get another plank, which we didn't do because that would double the price. So, hence, we got shortages here. Which isn't really a problem. I don't think it's a problem. So you got your two parts. There you go, it's the other part we made earlier. Now you put them on top of your base pack. Not on the side, very important. You have to keep, uh, keep the aspect ratio, which is 50 centimeters by 50. If you put it on the side, that won't fit anymore. So the whole point is, you get those two, like what we made now is a sledge, really, looks like a sledge. Then you get your other plank, plank C, and this one fit on here, on here, perfectly, plank C. There we go. This is plank C, and should fit right about here. So now, yeah, I'll take the camera and show it to you. So now, so now when you look at it, it looks already like a sledge, really. It also looks like the beginning of a sim rig. You got this part, and you got the front here, where your pedals go. This is how it should look like. So I haven't even, I haven't even screwed it yet. It's just standing there on its own. 
Um, the other part we have to do is get the plank. This is plank C, and we got two of those. Get another plank C for there, where we can put this seat on, which we got. Our racing seat. That look neat. So let's start screwing this together. So that's the other plate of part C. Put that in the view. So put that on here. That's where your seat goes. It's not screwed together by the way, not yet. So this should all fit nicely together. It does. So you get the idea already. Now you can take your seat, put it on here, adjust it a bit. So now you've already got an idea how this rig is going to look. It's going to look bloody awesome. Certainly for the money you've paid and put into it. Um, important bit is now, not everybody is as big as I am. So, it was, it was a joke, by the way, I'm not big. Um, I'm only a meter and 74. You've got bigger guys out there. So now it's, it's important um, where you put your seat. Luckily, this seat, we'll get that in the description where I got it, for its price, it's got railings. Seat railing. So I got two railings, seat railings, like you have in your car. So now you can adjust your seat, which is a good thing. So if you've got friends coming over, they're bigger, smaller, you can adjust it. Be aware, you can only adjust it about 15 to 18 maximum centimeters, but it's that's already not bad really. I think it's 18 centimeters, which is good. So, if you're fixing it for you, take a seat, check out the distance, um, figure out, okay, this is good, and then measure it out, and then put these in. It's all screwed together, so if you don't get it right the first time, you unscrew it and you do it again. That's the good thing about MDF. So this looks already pretty awesome. Let's uh, start screwing it together then. Now, if you really want a good job putting screws in MDF, you need this. Can you see this? I'll put this a bit closer. It's this type of head. You see that? So what this do does is doesn't drill the holes, it just drills a small hole where your screw fits into. Otherwise, if you screw directly in MDF, it will press the wood apart and it will like break. Like I said, I'm not a carpenter, but I know at least know that bit. The screws I'm, I'm using, you can use any type of screws, are these. And you need to like this head needs to like sink into the wood and they're long they're about four centimeters and a bit so they're nice and sturdy so you make a few lines where you're going to drill the holes I do it at two centimeters and at ten and then somewhere in the middle this is a 50 centimeter plate, so 25 is in the middle. So I got, can't really see it, can I? Let's make sure we can see this. So that your screws are a bit neat and tidy. Eight at two at ten at two at ten at twenty-five. There we go. So five on this side, five on the other. I'll start with the middle one. I'm 
not drilling holes yet, I'm making this an indent where this hole can fit, uh, the screw can fit. Because you can't actually see that very well, can you? There we go. So, about that. so say that again. Made in 2 centimeters, 10, 25, on the other side, 2 and 10. So I'm going to put the screw in. There we go, made an indent. My screw fits in there. Little tiny. So that cleans it up a bit. So I already did this side, three holes, three screws on that side as well. An important thing you have to do with this MDF and those type of screws is you can't just screw them in because the wood will split. So you don't want that, you don't want the wood splitting. So you need to take a tiny board, which is tinier than the screw by the way. To get it, it has to be tiny than the screw, otherwise, the screw won't do anything, will it? It's copper and it's tough, not that one, but make sure the whole thing is aligned again. Important if not, you have a crooked rig. And once it's aligned, not yet. Go a bit more. You can drill the holes. Try to like maintain the same distance left to right. So it looks at least a bit good. Once you drill the hole, you can put something in it. I'm using this. Let's rub it again. We use this bit again. There you go. Sit in the middle, otherwise, it won't work. Oh, that's okay. Go start enlarging the holes. This is already starting to look like a rake. There we go. So the bottom bit is not done yet because I'll lift this. We'll see. And we have to like. The only negative thing from this group and it's dark. Black MDF is that well, there's a lot of black dust coming and it's like chalk dust like that. The other side, put 
bottom side and we'll put that on. You see here, the wood is split. That's because I didn't drill the holes. So now I'm on, we drill holes. So the bottom part of the rig and then actually we're almost there. It's a one day build so easy peasy. Let's start drilling holes again. Now we have to make sure it is nicely aligned. That's really important. We'll start with this one. We're only going to drill the hole here first. We're going to put the screw in as well. And then continue on, so otherwise it's going to be crooked. It's going to move every time we drill a hole, so we don't want that. We want to keep it steady. So we'll align this part. We'll align the rest later on. First, drill the hole. So let's have a look at what we got now. After like, only actually in total maybe a, an hour and a half work. Something that really looks already like a sledge or a ring. So if you put some wheels on there, that will be handy. Yeah, there's one to come over here. That's it. There's plenty of room for your pedals and your steering wheel. So now let's put the sliders on the seat. Got the sliders here, they were included in the seat. Put those on. Make sure that the handle of the slider, where you can adjust the seat back and forwards, and of course in a forward, forward position, not backwards. So this thing has to be mounted on that side. Yep. And that maybe has to be mounted here. Now I have to make sure this seat fits on here. I have no idea how to do it yet. First, make sure it's absolutely in the middle. Get a Measuring equipment. So this is about six and a half centimeters. Should be a shame here, otherwise it's not a middle. Yeah, six and eight. So I draw a line where the chair will go. Oh, you guys can see this. Get a bit down again. So now the holes over there have to come together with the holes over here. Which is not easy. Do it said and done. You can put the chair next to it. Do it that way. There we go. That's just about it. Yeah.
Okay, we need to drill some holes. So, fellow YouTubers, I took everything outside. I'm gonna make a few bit of dust, so that's why it's buried with outside. And it's reasonable weather, it's not cold. Winter's is far away. So we're gonna sand this baby. You can use this. Sanding machine, or you can use this. A sanding machine, by hand. So, easy peasy, you just sand all the edges. Take off all the sharp corners. So once you think that's good, we just did a bit to make it nice and smooth. And this inside bit as well, make it nice and smooth. And it still just looks like a sledge, doesn't it? Bob sleigh. A little wind is gone. So what are we going to do next? We smoothed all the edges. It is pretty sturdy. You see, it's sturdy, but once you're in there and you're racing away, your pedals are everywhere, you're turning your wheel, you have no idea how, many, how much force a human being can put out. So this thing will break pretty easily. So we're gonna need to reinforce the inside. Now remember the corners, these corners we took out, these, well, that's this, isn't it? That's this corner. So we'll use these, clean them up a bit. We're gonna cut the edges off, down, up and down here. So we clamped them together. I'm just gonna cut this bit off and this bit off and then we're gonna use them on the inside here. So let's first plug this in, because otherwise it won't do a lot. Shorten them in a bit, like this. And I'm gonna mount them in here, just like that. So that's gonna make it much sturdier. And I've got another plank that you have left over from your big plank. So I'll go down here, 
and then this thing won't budge anymore. So let me do that and I'll come back to you. We'll mount the front plate. I got these wheels. I bought them for about, believe it or not, two euro fifty. Cheapest beans. We got two stead, uh, steady ones that don't turn, and two that turn. More than enough for this thing. And apparently, this can hold thirty kilos. It's not a lot, really, is it? A lot enough for that, but if you're sitting in it. We'll see. They bend. They bend. So this is not going to weigh 30 kilos. It's going to weigh about 15. Me in it, however, it's paint. It can be bloody expensive. Can't it? Well, not if you buy end of series paint or something like that. Three euro for this one. Should do it. Half a liter. Black. It's directly on to wood without a primer. Woo. But this tray and this for one euro fifty. So that makes the paint job three, four and a half euro. Can't complain. Put on the wheels first. I'm just going to measure that out because otherwise I'm going to... I want the wheels to be at the same place otherwise I won't look that good. So it's going to take about 5 centimeters. Got the edge here. Make, by the way, make sure you use screws that are not longer than the wood, otherwise it's going to stick out the other end. Not good. So we don't want that. Turn that a bit.
So make sure the surface is clean before you paint. If you've got a wife, make sure you got something underneath the thing so you don't paint the table with it. Otherwise, you won't have a wife much longer. Just the tip of the tray. Say it's a weird kind of black. Looks more like chocolate black to me, but we'll see. Stop painting. I'm gonna give it my last coat of paint inside because it's dark outside and cold. So guys, it's finished. Got the paint job done, give it two coats, and the rig is done, let it dry for a day or two, and you are ready. I'll put the chair ready in here, the wheels are over there, so it's easy to move. The chair is in here, and the chair is movable, because you pay a bit more for your chair when you have the sledge, so you can move it, so other people can fit in it. If you just don't use it for yourself, or you can make your own sledge, could be cheaper than even more. Now you're in here, you sit down, you can't use the steering wheel, press the handle and you can move the seat forward. You can sit as close as far as you want like in a real car. So that's the beauty of it and it moves pretty far. The distance is uh, more than reasonable and it's perfect. So the only things we have left of the whole kit of the plank are these two planks here. So from the whole big plank we bought in the DIY store, these are the only tools left. And actually with these, you can build something else, which is something to put your keyboard on or your shifter, because you're going to need a shifter. And I have a, a trick for that too. I sh will show you that in my other rig that I built about 15 years ago, I think. And it's still working perfect. So we'll switch over to the other video I made of my first rig that I ever built. And that's it. I hope you guys like this build. Give it a thumbs up. And try it at home. I'm not a DIY man. Well, I'm a DIY man, but I'm not a professional. I just 
go with the flow and try everything out. Uh, if I can build this, you can build this. So this is cheap as beans without that chair. It's like when you, when you buy the, cheap, the, the most expensive plank, which is the black MDF. It's 50 euro. If you buy the white MDF or the normal MDF, you can make this thing for, believe it or not, 19 euro. Uh, with the screws and everything in it, let's make it 25 euro. 25 euro for this. I mean, can't complain, can you? It's just a chair that costs you a bit of money. You can easily take out a chair in a, a car graveyard and take out a chair on a, of an original car. If you can get it for free, why not? Do it. I mean, works just as well. My first uh, rig I built, I got a chair from a car that I took out of a car that I didn't need. So, easy peasy. You can build a cheap rig, and that's what this video was all about. Going as cheap as possible. And you build on onwards from there. So, don't have to break the bank. Got a good rig, and can have some fun racing. Only thing you do, need to do now is buy yourself a steering wheel, pedals, and that yeah, is in a price range from like 100 euro to, well, you know, two, three thousand euro if you go Hersingsfeld and very expensive other gear. So that's it, boys. Give it a thumbs up. I'm out of here. Thank you for watching.